Hey guys, what's up? Chris Lee, aka Tony Singer, songwriter, producer, professional audio engineer, owner of United Destiny Entertainment. So check this out. I'm going to be giving you guys a freebie today. I'm going to be giving you guys a United Destiny Pro Tools one on one tutorial. And basically, this tutorial is going to kind of pinpoint and touch on what to do when none of your inputs and outputs are showing in your session, as well as your faders are grayed out. Uh, your panners and your faders are grayed out. A lot of you freak out and be like, man, dude, what's the deal with my Pro Tools? My Pro Tools isn't working. Nine times out of ten, you guys are probably amateurs just using the program or you just bought it because you wanted to start doing music, which is totally okay. Uh, you know, YouTube videos have went a long way into helping people out try to fix problems in Pro Tools. Uh, I'm a professional audio engineer. It's what I do, so I know this program, and I'm going to give you guys a tip today that's going to be very helpful for you. So right off the bat, don't freak out when you can't see your inputs and your outputs or your faders or your panners are all grayed out. <clears throat> that's just the I.O. issue. Now, I can explain why that happens. Nine times out of ten, uh, if your hardware is set up, if your Pro Tools isn't linked to the hardware that you're using, as, such as the interface or the, the built-in inputs and outputs or the Pro Tools aggregate, any of that, if it's set to something else or if you had it linked to interface or something like that and then you decided to switch over inside of your Pro Tools like I'm doing in this tutorial, I had to switch over from my interface to Pro Tools aggregate and the I.O. for the session that was recorded was recorded in a professional studio uh, using uh, SSL consoles and stuff like that. So it's not going to read any interface that I'm using right now or any input and output because I'm not linked and hooked up to that uh, interface or that, that console anymore. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you how to fix that. First thing that you want to do, step one, oh, and by the way, these A123456, that's usually like in professional studios where they're using, you know, uh, uh, DG racks and, you know, <clears throat> they're using 16 input IOs and different stuff like that. Basically, the A1, A2, A3, A4, all the analog, they're the inputs and they're the outputs of whatever you're using. Uh, in that case, it was like I said, it was a professional studio session being recorded and that's what recently all the inputs were set to now that we're not recording that and i'm mixing it here at home now i'm going to show you guys how to fix that first thing you always want to do i like to go through a step process step one i go to setup <clears throat> and then i go to hardware once i go to setup and the hardware the hardware setup is obviously like i said the gear that you're using the interface whatever the inputs and outputs the piece of gear that you're going to be using to mix the session has to be attached to the session to be able to have ins and outs or you can use the internal inputs and outputs uh, I don't recommend it but it's a choice if you want to use it personal preference I'm using it right now uh, for the purpose of this tutorial um, <clears throat> so you can see my hardware setup is Pro Tools aggregate uh, I'm not using the interface right now because I don't need it. I can't use the interface for this tutorial, so that's good to good to go. If you're using the M Audio Fast Track Ultra uh, Focus Right Sapphire Pro 40, um, it should read that inside of there, and that'll let you know that you're actually using that piece of gear for the session. Next thing you want to do is go to Setup again, go to Playback Engine. When you go to Playback Engine, go up here. <clears throat> right above the settings and whatever your interface is or whatever you're going to be using your piece of hardware it should read it up here so if I have my M audio fast track ultra or any of my pieces of gear it will say the name in here but right now I'm using a pro tools aggregate for this tutorial so that's good to go it, once you click it like it just did me it would ask you if uh, you sure that you want to save it blah 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 this and that it uh, uh, exit out the session and reopen it back up with the actual piece of hardware that you're going to be using. So that's good to go. Step three, most important part is the I.O. setup. Now, notice in my I.O. setup, there are no inputs. There are no outputs. Um, there are buses, but we're not going to talk about the buses just yet. 
So right off the bat, there's no inputs and there's no outputs, which means that my option to record isn't enabled and also means my option to hear any output coming out, my monitors, the speakers, whatever you're using, I'm not going to be able to hear anything, even with the headphones. So to top that off, if you want to fix that issue, nine times out of ten, whatever you had in there prior, say if it's your interface or you recorded at a studio, those inputs and outputs might be in there or they might not be in there. Just to be on a safe side, if you see anything in there, once you made the changes to your actual interface, uh, what you want to hit is Command A. Now I don't have anything in here to to hit Command A with, but matter of fact, I'll actually do that. So I'll show you that in a second. So if you have anything in there, you hit Command A. Command A will highlight it, and you hit Delete. Once you hit Delete, don't freak out. Your inputs and your outputs didn't go anywhere. All you have to do is just hit Default. So I'm gonna pretend like I have something there. Command A, bam, hit delete, it's gone. Now I need my inputs and outputs again. So what do I do? I hit default, simply. Now that's telling me that my inputs for this program and for each track that I want to record on or do whatever, if I do want to record, it's telling me that that's the inputs that I'm going to be using. So built and microphone one and two is my options to have for recording. Now for my outputs, it's the same thing. Uh, I want to be able to have something to have output, so I would hit Command A, delete if it's not uh, your actual interface in there, and then I'll just hit default. Bam, now I got my outputs, one and two. My outputs, one and two, now this gives me the option to be able to hear what I'm mixing, hear what I'm recording, playback, the whole nine yards. It's set, it's good to go. And to be on the safe side, uh, I like to do the same thing with the buses. So I'll hit Command A, I'll hit delete. You see what it says, currently being used in a session, but I'm going to delete it anyways. It's okay because I hit default. I get it right back. I'm good to go. Now, if you notice over here, I only have the mapping out going to uh, built-in output one and two because I don't have an interface hooked up to it. And it don't give you that many options when you're just using the built-in uh, input and output. So, with that being said, you see my buses uh, go all the way to 36 and my built-in output goes to one and two now the inserts the mic pre's and the hardware insert delay all that all that stuff basically is your outboard gear your your patch bay any of that stuff that you want to link or run the outputs of your your audio tracks back out to your hardware gear your hardware gear, you can be able to set and route all that stuff up by having everything in the I.O. set up. And that's the most important part. We'll get deeper into that later in more videos. So, like I was telling you earlier, simply Command A, delete, it's gone, new path. That right there, if doing that across the board assures me that my inputs and outputs are ready to go. So, as you can see, my outputs came in, but they're not set yet to my monitors. You want to be able to have them set to your monitors. And to set them up to your monitors, they have to go one and two, left and right. But you see, my, my knobs now, my panners are gone. But the option to record, let's see if I can record without having anything set up. No, it says this track cannot be record enabled because it doesn't have both an active input and output assigned. Which is, I mean, technically smart. It makes sense. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and set up your inputs and your outputs. Now, I'm going to show you the most important key that I love to use that is a really good quick key for anybody using Pro Tools uh, in general. You notice that all these tracks are highlighted. If I want to unhighlight them, today we're going to talk about the option key. The option key is very important. Check this out. So I'm going to hold down option. If you're on a PC, you're going to hold down alt. I'm going to click one time. I just unselected every track. So if I wanted to move a track around, I can move a track around. Uh, if I wanted to take this track and move it down way down here, I can do that. Now, if I wanted to use, say, these tracks, say if I wanted to use, move the first five tracks, I would hold down shift, click it the first track and then click the fifth track and then drag that whole set to the end 
Now I got all those tracks at the end. I want to move them back. I don't have to hold shift because they already highlighted. Just do the same thing. So I want to click everything. So I'm going to hold down option. It's going to unclick the ones that I had selected. And I'm going to click option again. So now I'm going to get to the important part. Setting in the inputs and outputs together all at once. If you want to set all your outputs up at once, you're going to click on the first output by holding shift option. And once you hold down shift option, uh, on the PC it would be shift alt. You would basically hold down shift option together, still holding it, and you would uh, use your trackpad and your mouse to go down the output and select the output, which we said one and two. Bam! Look at that. My panners came back. I'm able to, um, I'll be able to record once I set the input. I don't even think you can do it right now. Nope, exactly, because you got to have both. So the next thing that I want to do is, okay, well, say I want to, I want to be able to record. I want to record some vocals. Uh, you would do the same option. You would hold down shift option for the first input. You go to the first input and you would hit built in interface. Bam. There you go. Built-in interface just gave me the option to use built-in microphone one, which on your interface it will be input one or mic one. Uh, I also wanted to show you guys a, a little trick that I like to do. Sometimes when, because you can't really tell what that says, it just says uh, BLT dash in microphone whatever. What I like to do is sometimes I like to go here, double click, and I like to rename mic mic input one say so if I just named it that <clears throat> hit OK it changed that name to mic input one letting me know that it's gonna be mic input one on my interface that's a very great key to have uh, it's very important the same thing let's get back to the option key the option key is very important it works the same way if you want to use inserts of sins or whatever. So say if I wanted to insert a compressor all the way across, I will hold down shift. I will hold down option because all my tracks are highlighted. And I will simply say if I wanted to put an R compressor. Bam. It just put an R compressor all the way across the board, which is a very, very quick key to have. Uh, it's a very nice key to have, uh, especially... When you're as fast as me, I mix very fast. I get the job done ASAP. Um, you know, I, I'm just quick with Pro Tools. I, I have experience in it, uh, obviously, and and it works out me. It works out for me wonderfully because it it makes my job that much easier. Same thing if I want to take them away. Shift Option, and you unclick. No insert. Bam. It took all the inserts away. Now remember what I talked about earlier, if you want to do only a certain number of tracks. So I'll hit option, unclick everything. I'll hit from track one, hold and shift, go on to track five, hold down shift option, go to the inserts again and say if I want to put an EQ. It's only going to put an EQ on those five tracks that I selected because those are the tracks that are selected right now. So with that being said, Whenever you're trying to, my bad about that, whenever you're trying to, you know, just do some quick mixing and get some stuff stuff going, uh, it'll actually help you out by being able to, to work faster and more proficiently. Uh, next thing that I would like to do, or show you guys, is pretty much, well, you know what, check this out. I'll save more tips and tricks for y'all and more videos. I'm going to go ahead and end this video because of... Uh, I could, I could go on all day and talk and fill this whole entire video up. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. Um, if you have any issues with your inputs or outputs or you know anybody who are having issues with inputs and outputs, refer them to this video. Please comment. Please like. Please subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to get more viewers and, and people to really check out these videos because I want to help you guys out. So thanks for watching. It's Chris Lee, a.k.a. Tony, and I hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks.